Hey everyone, it's been a while since we've last seen each other. Some time ago I saw this great piece called The Hound of Felg, made by Ryan Woodrow. I've put a link to his other work in the description, but it got me thinking. I have a good friend that's a fan of both Berserk and Warhammer, and I know he would get a kick out of this, so let's kit bash guts as a marine. Now, finding an appropriate model wasn't hard, the Space Wolves were the perfect candidate for my experiment. Using a regular marine wouldn't be fitting for such an awesome character, and I want him to be playable in a game of 40k. To this end, I've taken Ragnar Blackmane to use as my main model, and the Space Wolves upgrade pack for the helmets. I am clipping the parts I need and assembling the model starting with the feet. Once we have the tactical rock glued, it's time to move on to his torso. Now the kit bashing begins. Before I glue it on, I want to make some changes, starting with his sword. This is Ragnar's sword. I've searched far and wide for an existing sword that would resemble the one used by Guts. And the closest I've got to it was the great sword from the Custodian Guard box. But we just need to make it greater using a second sword. I separate one of the swords from its hilt and then mark the area on the second blade where I could attach it as far as possible before the tip is formed. Pay attention to the orientation of the arm on the sword. You could have it in the same position as Ragnar, swinging overhead. However, I wanted to have it in a plunging motion. After it's all glued, I set it aside to dry while I work on the cannon arm. An iconic weapon used by Guts. To make the cannon, I take a gun of a Caradron Thunderer and cut the barrel before assembling the whole thing. I then cut out his forearm to make room for the cannon and attach Ragnar's hand for a striking resemblance to the source material. Next up, I am attaching the torso. This way I can glue on the sword without fear of interfering with the legs. And it's already taking shape. I'm adding the wolf pelt cloak and sides before cutting off a part of the front pelt and the sword guard for a better fit. With the sword in place, this would be the best time to glue on his gauntlet on the back of his right forearm. But I somehow managed to lose it after cutting it off his original arm, and after a 15 minute search I gave up and just used the leftover wolf pelt claw to cover up the arm. Finally we add the remaining pauldron and the backpack. No need to change those, and the last piece we need to seal the deal is the wolf helmet from the upgrade pack. And there we have it, guts made only from Games Workshop plastic. I've actually managed to break off the sword after priming, and I used a section from a paperclip to hold it in place. Usually pinning is more elegant, but this will have to do since the sword is too thin to hold it inside. Now on to painting the little guy. Step 1 is Primer, Chaos Black as usual. I want to keep the model quite dark, so I go straight to basing the metallics with Iron Warriors. I actually got myself the AK Interactive full range of Turgen Acrylics for Christmas, so I'm excited to try them out and I'm gonna use a few of them in this video. While the metallics dry, I take a large dry brush and start blocking out the color of the pelt with burnt amber. After that, I give it a dry brush of ash grey. I then base the holster and the leather pouches with mud brown before applying a very watered down wash made of Rhinox hide. Continuing with the details, I base the sword grip and the various fangs with two coats of Zandri dust, followed by a coat of Screaming Skull. Next up, I shade the fangs and pelt with Agrax Earthshade. Shade. 
Next, I want the inside of the pelt to be a worn, dirty, bloody mess, so we're starting with the base of burnt red. After that, I shade the whole miniature with non oil, and once it dries, I dry brush dark brown on the belt. Time to work on the shiny bits. I base the wolf eyes on the helmet and backpack as well as the various gems on the armor with white before applying a coat of spirit stone red. I paint the base quickly with dark sea blue and a dry brush of medium grey on top of that. The different metal parts sticking out were based with iron warriors and the shell casings with rusty brass. For an extra bloody touch I add blood for the blood god on his sword and that's it. After that I apply a healthy coat of Valhallen blizzard around his rock. And here is the end result. Thanks for watching everyone, I hope I did God's justice with this build. Kid Bashik is truly my favorite part of this great hobby. I've also tried a new recording setup, so let me know your thoughts if anything seems wrong. And if you're watching this video around release, I hope you had a great year and I'll see you in the next one.